G'day guys and welcome back to another episode of Red Pill Garage. On today's episode, I'm going to teach you guys how to properly diagnose a bad engine coolant temperature sensor, also commonly known as an ECT sensor or a CTS coolant temperature sensor. Now you're probably thinking, what is a coolant temperature sensor and how do I know if I have a bad coolant temperature sensor? Well, the purpose of the coolant temperature sensor is basically to monitor the temperature of the engine and rate out a coolant and sends the signal back to the ECU or electronic control unit or commonly known as the main computer. So for example, when you first start your engine and the engine is cold, the computer or ECU sees that the engine and coolant is cold so the computer will adjust the engine performance settings by adding more fuel to the engine so it runs smooth and reduces the amount of fuel going into the engine as it warms up. And there's many symptoms of a bad coolant temperature sensor. For example, your car may be showing signs of poor fuel economy or black smoke from the exhaust or engine overheating or fluctuations in the temperature settings or rough idle and your radiator electronic fans not turning on. Or even, for instance, on this 2004 VY Holden Commodore, the fans are turning on when the engine is cold and it continuously stays on until you turn the key off. Now if you're getting the check engine warning light on and the fault codes are P1116 and P0118, more than likely it's a bad coolant temp sensor. Now your check engine light may stay on for a few seconds or stay on all the time. On this particular car it's actually intermitting. And you can see there how the fan continuously stays on, doesn't turn off unless you shut the engine down. Okay, these are the basic tools I'll be using to diagnose the problem today. Nothing too high tech, just an infrared thermometer in the back there and a multimeter. Oh yeah, and don't forget the cigarette lighter, that's high tech as well. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Now just to let you guys know, the sensor is a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. What this means is that resistance decreases with temperature increase, which changes the voltage. And don't forget your safety glasses. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is to remove the engine beauty cover. Off she comes. Now if you're unsure on the location of your coolant temperature sensor, just do a quick Google search on your car, Google Images, and you'll be able to locate it or just follow the top radiator hose and it's usually at the bottom of the thermostat housing and there it is there on this particular engine okay what you want to do next is push that locking tab up and pull back on the electrical plug Make sure you don't pull back on the wires, but the electrical plug itself or the connector. And what you want to do next is visually check for any damage, any corrosion. And you can see the contacts in there are clean and the wires are not frayed or broken. And the harness looks okay as well. So there's no external damage anywhere. So what you want to do next is turn the ignition on, but don't start the car. Just turn the ignition on. Okay, next what you want to do is turn your multimeter onto the voltage setting. And then with your black wire, which is the ground wire, secure that to the battery negative. Make sure it's got a nice tight fit. And now what we're going to do, we're going to make sure we've got 5 volts coming down to the wiring harness plug. So we're going to use the red wire for that. And there we have it, we've got 5 volts, so that's coming from the computer, so we know from that point there to the computer, there's no open circuit. And that's our continuity setting, we're going to turn it down to that setting there. Okay, next make sure you turn the ignition switch off, and that's the ground side of the circuit, and you're going to hear a beeping noise now, and that means we have good continuity. So what continuity means, it refers to something occurring in an uninterrupted state, so we know we've got a good earth and we've got good voltage supply so we now know that part of the circuit is all okay so we must have a faulty sensor but we're still going to test that sensor now what you want to do next is just throw a drip tray under the car to catch any coolant now some cars will lose a little bit of coolant some cars won't lose any coolant at all 
And then it's just a matter of unscrewing the coolant sensor itself. And there we have it, one engine coolant temperature sensor. Okay, next on the multimeter, you want to turn the setting on to ohms or the resistance setting. And there's the pin connectors in the coolant sensor. And you want to sit that sensor inside a socket because you don't want the warmth of your hands to change the temperature of that sensor. Because it is sensitive to temperature. Now at 30 degrees Celsius, we should be getting 2,265 ohms of resistance. And we can double check the temperature of that. And we've got about 29 degrees Celsius. And here's the new one. 29 degrees Celsius. As you can see, the old one and the new one are both pretty close to the specifications. Now, if you were to get no reading at all, you would definitely know that coolant temperature sensor is faulty. Now, there's another test you can actually do. You can get your cigarette lighter and heat the end of the sensor up. Now, just be careful not to burn your fingers. And with the heat, we should get a reduction in resistance or ohms. And that's another good indication to say that's working. Now, because this is intermitting, I'm still going to replace that sensor. They are fairly cheap, but this car's done a fair few Ks anyway. So I'm going to replace it. And we know the circuit on the car is working. So this is the cheapest alternative is to replace that sensor. So now you guys know how to properly test the circuit on the car and the sensor itself. Okay, I've let that sensor cool down for a good 10 minutes. And you can see the ohms reading on that. That's definitely a fail. And there you have it. 29 and a half degrees Celsius. And you can see it's way out of specification. So now it's finally decided to play up. Okay, now it's time to screw in a new coolant temperature sensor. Now when screwing these sensors in, don't go over tightening them. You may only get three or four turns out of it and that's about it. And then gently reconnect the electrical connector. Okay, next I'm gonna to top up the coolant in the radiator from the drip tray under the car. Clamp off the overflow hose because we don't wanna fill up the overflow bottle. And if your car's got a bleed screw at the top of the motor, you want to unscrew that as well. You want to push the air out of the system so you can get all the coolant in there. And then I'm going to use a spill-free funnel to push the rest of the air out of the system because it's actually higher than the bleed screw. And you can see the coolant pouring out there. So now we've got a good stream of fluid coming out. So there's no more trapped air in the system. And then it's just a matter of tightening up the bleed screw. Make sure you don't over tighten them because these things are made out of brass. Being a softer metal, they will break if you over tighten them. On goes the engine beauty cover. Okay, now it's time to start the engine up. And there we have it. The fan's not actually on now, which is great. Okay, they're the four codes we had before we did the repairs. So P1116 and P0118. We're going to erase all those codes. Get out of the system, get back into the system. DTC analysis means diagnostic trouble code. Searching for those codes and it's all passed. There's no DTC, no diagnostic trouble code. And there you have it guys. That's how you diagnose a coolant temperature sensor properly. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button not to miss out on any future videos. And I'll see you on the next episode of Red Pill Garage. Thank you for watching.